This is a short video about chapter six in Stein's elementary number theory book. And this will just cover the introductory section about elliptic curves. And so uh, what are these elliptic curves is what we're gonna talk about in this video. And one thing that we will uh, focus on if you're taking my number theory class, uh, these elliptic curves, haven't told you at all what they are yet, but they're widely believed to be pretty good to provide pretty good security and with smaller key sizes than say like RSA. And so maybe, and again, why is that useful? If you're gonna put some kind of an encryption key on a postage stamp, you probably want the key size to be pretty short. And another thing that the elliptic curves, uh, we found um, a use for them, is that uh, you can use elliptic curves to factor integers. And so we know that factoring integers, large inter integers, is believed to be a very hard problem to solve. It's easy to check that you know these two numbers factor this integer, but it's very hard given a large number to say find its prime factors. And again, that's kind of the basis for uh, cryptography. Anyway though, so elliptic curves can be used to help factor integers. And, and so elliptic curves can be used kind of, you know, um, on the dark side to attack RFSA public key cryptography. So we'll see some of that a little bit later on. So to get into the actual math here, here's a picture of an elliptic curve. And you see, we're gonna generate, we're gonna plot that equation in a moment in Sage, I'll show you how to do that. But this thing, um, it has equation down here, y squared equals x cubed minus five x plus four. Uh, plus four. And then when it says over R, that means that uh, we're gonna graph this thing like an R2, so that all of its inputs are real numbers, say. So all points X and Y are real numbers. What we're going to do pretty soon though, is instead of taking all real numbers as possible coordinates, maybe I'll just take rational numbers, or maybe I'll take numbers from like a finite field, like Z mod 7Z, or Z mod PZ, where P is a really big prime. So that's what we're gonna do. In that case, visualizing these can be a little bit more difficult. So what's the definition of elliptic curve that we're gonna work with? That's definition 6.11 here. An elliptic curve over a field K, so this word field is something that you might have encountered before, before this class. And remember, we're talking about, here's some examples of fields, say the rational numbers, the real numbers, the complex numbers, or something like Z mod PZ are all examples of fields. And there are other types of fields, other examples too, this is just a few. Remember the main thing we're saying is, uh, you know, I wanna be able to um, add, add elements in these together, and they should be able to multiply things together and stay in the field. And then something about a field that sets it apart, say from a ring, is that you should have multiplicative inverses as well as additive inverses. So you should be able to um, sort of undo both the operations is the way I think about it sometimes. So anyway, so an elliptic curve over a field K is a curve that's defined by this equation, y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b, and where a and b are elements of the field. And, uh, and so I'm going to highlight a and b in different colors here because it'll be useful a little bit later. And then I have this kind of goofy condition. Uh, I need to make sure minus 16 times 4aq plus 27b squared is non-zero. And in the next part of the paragraph, it's very important, but as of right now, it's just kind of subtle and you can ignore it for the moment. So it implies the curve has no singular points. I haven't told you about what singular points are and I'm not going to in this video, so just ignore that for now. Let's see if we can graph an elliptic curve. Let's see if we can recreate the graph above. And remember the, the graph above, its equation was, uh, if I'm trying to draw your attention up here, y squared equals x cubed minus 5x plus 4. And so what we need to do, and we need to tell Sage, just like it says here, we've already got uh, this kind of built in, a method to make elliptic curves built into Sage, which is cool. So I'll just follow along. So I'm just gonna tell it E is elliptic curve. So capital E, capital C. And then Sage already knows that you're talking about, oh, elliptic curves. And so, so far, all you need to tell it is, in brackets here, the first coordinate will be what A is, so that's minus five, that's why it's green, and the second coordinate will be four, and that's B, and so that's why it's orange. So just to draw your attention to, what do you tell Sage in order to plot this curve? Once you do that, Sage already knows that you're talking about y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b. All you need to do is tell it A and B, is what I'm saying to you. Also, I didn't mention anything about K, like what field are we working in. By default, K will always use the rational numbers as uh, the field that it's working in. So it'll give us a plot that's, uh, you know, as far as our eyes can tell, you know, look continuous. Looks like there's no, no bouncing around and not just a discrete number of points. And uh, what do you see here? Um, these things, it'll, if you just tell it to, if you just run it and say E, it'll print out the elliptic curve defined by blah, blah, blah over the rational field. I'm gonna skip that. I put little comments in front of it just because it's not very useful to what I'm gonna do. What I wanna do is print it. So I'm gonna say P equals this E dot plot. And then I'll just keep the thickness equals four. I don't really care that the color is green like in the book. Uh, I think the default color is gonna be blue. And anyway, now I just wanna do P dot show. 
And if I run this now, it didn't give me quite the whole graph and I see that I forgot some of the inputs on the window size like the book has. So let me do the fig size command here, uh, fig size, and I'll just keep it four to six since it seems like that works. So four comma six, if I try that now, there we go. And so I've recreated this graph uh, in Sage from the book here. So that's pretty cool. So we've got our first elliptic curve. And so let's get back into, so that's an example of an elliptic curve over the rationals. And again, I'm trying to highlight what are the things you tell Sage. You see, you just need to tell it A and B. And so you can take a minute and just make sure all the colors line up with the greens and the oranges. Where are they coming from? Now, if I'm down here, we'll also play with elliptic curves over finite fields. And so not over the rationals, say. So for example here, what if I wanted to, like an elliptic curve over the field Z mod 37 Z? So remember 37 is a prime. So C mod P Z is a field whenever P is a prime. What if I wanted to plot that? And uh, so how do I tell Sage to do that? So now I'm gonna to try to recreate this code in the book for you. And it's the same thing. What I hope that you notice is though, is that um, just in front of the one comma zero, there's just an extra argument. And that's where you tell Sage what field you're working over. And to tell Sage C mod 37 Z, it's GF comma or GF parentheses, whatever prime modulus you have. And so if I pull Sage back up just to make sure we can recreate that picture over there. Um, so I'll try to do that down here. If I told it that now E is equal to elliptic curve, and uh, again, we're gonna do GF 37. So that's us telling Sage that we're working in Z mod 37 Z, and we're gonna plot the curve X cubed plus X. And so what I hope that you notice, if it's X cubed plus X, that means A is one and B is zero. And so all I need to tell it then is one zero. So it's a different curve than the previous example. I'm not sure if I made that clear quite yet. If I just printed that out, it would give me this little statement here that is in uh, commas here. Um, the elliptic curve defined by blah, blah, blah over Z mod 37Z. What do I wanna do? I wanna look at it. So I'm just gonna skip down to the E dot plot. And uh, again, point size, you can change how thick the points are, which would be good to do because in this case over Z mod 37Z, it's not gonna be like some continuous graph. You don't expect that, or at least it doesn't look like a continuous graph. So if I do that now and I scroll down, Ta-da, we've recreated that graph. So that is the graph of that equation. Again, if you're only allowed to plug things in from Z mod 37 Z, which is kind of interesting. So I hope that that is a quick introduction to just how do you work with these elliptic curves in Sage for right now, just the basics of them. And what we're gonna get into is uh, why are we going to study them? Why are they useful here? So what we'll look at down here is in the next section, in the next video, we're gonna look at, there's a way to put a group structure on the set. Remember this word abelian that you might see? So I think you see this word abelian is right here. That means that you could do the order in either, in either, uh, either order. You could do the operation in either order. The, the operation is commutative is what I mean to say. And uh, so what are we looking at? So I've got this set E of K. So you could take this to mean E stands for elliptic curve and then this kind of function notation is telling you um, what are the points you're considering, what, what's the field over which you're considering the curve here. And so what should E of K be? What is this set? In this first set that I have underlined, it looks like all ordered pairs in K cross K uh, that satisfy this equation here. And so again, this is actually the set of all points that are on the elliptic curve of interest, y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b. And then union though, union some single thing that's a fancy O. And what on earth is this fancy O? And if we read down a little bit, the book tells us this fancy O is thought of as the point on the curve that's called at infinity. And so it's not something that we actually draw or actually can visualize in any sense of the way. And that's all the book really tells us about right now. And so what is O and why it's useful should not be clear at all just from this paragraph. You should feel kind of confused, like what is that? But what I do promise is that uh, pretty soon, we're gonna define a way to try to add points on the curve. And when I say add points on the curve, I mean so that, uh, so that we stay on the curve when I add two points. So like P1 plus P2 should be another point called P3 that's still a point on the same curve I'm interested in. And it turns out that this O, this idea of the point at infinity, is what we're gonna use to be the additive identity. And so that'll be kind of the key to making this a group. 
And uh, if I scroll a little bit towards the bottom here, remark 6.1.3, there is a much more general way to write elliptic curves rather than the blue highlighted y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b. And you could read remark 6.3, 6.1.3 if you're interested in, in it, but we're not gonna worry too much about that for uh, what we continue to do throughout this book.